into which a child called Muhammad ibn Abdullah was born in the year 570 AD. He was of modest background but would grow up to become the prophet of one of the world's three great religions of the book. In Islam, it is considered blasphemous to show any visual representation of Muhammad, so we have no means to describe him as a man. Little is known of the Prophet's early life, and the accounts that exist were written over a century after his death. They relate that Muhammad's mother, Amina, died when he was little, and he was cared for by his grandfather. As an orphan in, in this kind of society which was so highly stratified, he was part of the have-nots. He was part of the group that uh, didn't belong to this landed aristocracy that controlled almost every aspect of the, the political and social and economic organization of the city. But Muhammad had the support of a powerful uncle, Abu Talib, and by the time he was 25 had become a successful trader. He traveled with a caravan from Mecca to Syria with a reputation as a shrewd and honest businessman. Muhammad was also known as a man of wisdom and integrity. He attracted the attention of Khadija, a wealthy widow 15 years his senior, who hired him to run a caravan. Soon, she proposed marriage. According to the traditional Muslim biographies of Muhammad, he achieved financial success and enjoyed a happy marriage. However, he struggled to find meaning and purpose in a world that contains such widespread poverty and injustice. I think of the Prophet as being a religious seeker, somebody who was attuned to the notion of, of a God and of a developing spirituality really within his own life. Muhammad found himself questioning the tribal religions that worshipped multiple deities. He himself is believed by many to have been a member of a small group of peoples in Arabia who saw something wrong with the prevailing paganism, the rituals, the polytheism that was rampant in Arabia and who would steal away from society from time to time in order to contemplate the realities of human existence. It was during one of these retreats in a cave outside Mecca that Muhammad experienced a vision that would change the course of history. In that cave, according to Muslim tradition, the word of God was revealed by the angel Gabriel, so triggering a chain of events that helped shape the world we inhabit today. Five times each day, Muslims all over the world turn in the direction of a beacon of hope and kneel to pray. That beacon is the holy city of Mecca, located in what today is Saudi Arabia. But in the early 7th century AD, Mecca, Islam's most sacred site, was a hub of pagan worship and a city rife with social injustice. That is, until the appearance of one of the world's most sacred texts, the Quran. According to tradition, a 40-year-old trader named Muhammad ibn Abdullah often withdrew to a cave outside Mecca to reflect on a world he saw as increasingly oppressive and unjust. It is believed that in the year 610 AD, during one of his meditations in the cave, Muhammad was gripped abruptly by an overwhelming presence. Suddenly, he felt this intense pressure in his chest. Uh, he was surrounded by this darkness, as, and it felt as though he was being clasped by a giant hand and squeezed. He could barely breathe. And in his mind, he heard this voice, and the voice said, Recite. Recite. He was shocked, stunned, probably wondering, did I really hear something? And then, as he heard it again, he finally said, I don't have anything to recite. And eventually, that, that voice, which tradition tells us was the angel Gabriel, revealed the first verse of the Quran. Recite, in the name of your Lord who created, created humanity from a clot of blood. Recite, for your Lord is the most generous one, who has taught by the pen, taught humanity that which it did not know. This is a very important moment because 
it's, it's the moment in which Muhammad ceases to be just a, an ordinary Meccan businessman concerned with society's ill and suddenly becomes what in the biblical tradition is referred to as prophet. And like most prophets, he wants nothing to do with it. Panic-stricken and fearful for his sanity, Muhammad sought out his wife, Khadija. What he really wants to do is kill himself. But it is eventually Khadija who saves him from this, from this, and who explains to him that he has been called by God, that he has been given a task of prophecy, and that he really has no choice but to make this message known. The revelation in the cave marked the beginning of a 22-year period, during which Muhammad received all the divine messages that would become the Quran. According to tradition, sometimes the words came ringing clear in his ears like a bell. At other times, they came in agonizing fits that resembled epileptic seizures. He would go into these convulsions, he would sweat, he would suddenly look off into the distance, he would be almost dead to the, to the observer. And when he came out of these, uh, these prophetic moments, uh, he would suddenly spew out these revelations. The revelations always seem to reflect the needs of the Arab tribesfolk around him. The early verses were terse and simple, they were a challenge to the pantheistic pagan practices of the people of Mecca and a summons to worship one God. Remember the name of your Lord and devote yourself fully to him. He is the Lord of the East and the West. There is no God but he, so take him as your guardian. Chapter 73, verse 8. For the first few years of these revelations, Muhammad memorized the verses and only shared them with his wife and closest friends. But gradually he came to believe that he had been called to prophecy and that he had a duty to pass on to others the words collecting in his head. Finally, in the year 612 AD, the reluctant prophet went into the center of Mecca and began to preach. It was a wake-up call to those citizens of Mecca who, in the eyes of the Prophet, had lost an awareness, if they ever had it, of a supreme God, of the one God who, who created all and who guides all. But while the God of which Muhammad spoke was glorious and merciful, he was also just and wrathful. The Prophet told the people that a day of judgment would come when there would be consequences for their actions on earth. Here is this man that's known that he's been carrying on these vigils. And he comes into the marketplace, say, and he says, the world will end. The God who created the world will bring it to an end. And you are part of that. Now that is a powerful, powerful message. A powerful message, but not a new one. Muhammad made it clear that the Quran was the very same revelation that had been handed down to the Jews and to the Christians centuries earlier, a message about God's guidance for humankind. And now the revelation was being given to the Arabs for the first time and in their own language. The Prophet never said that I brought a new religion for you. The Prophet simply said, I am a messenger bringing the same message which has been brought to you by dozens and dozens of these extraordinary figures in our mutual history. Over and over again, the Quran says, do not forget what happened to Abraham when, and then it'll tell a story about Abraham.